So now we ended up with this, which is quite a, quite a different design that we worked on together. Absolutely. Um, more radical than anything else, uh, I find pr probably one of the most exciting boats we've ever done. Totally unique and um, I would love to spend time on board this boat. My name is Jean-Marc Foucault, I'm the CEO of Fetchip uh, Royal Valent. I am Peter Eidsgaard, uh, founder and partner of Harrison Eidsgaard in London. So Peter, we've been working quite some years together now, um, starting with Tango. Can you explain a little bit of our journey together? Well, we, when we started uh, Harrison Eidsgaard in 2005, um, we were very fortunate to start almost immediately with the work on Tango. That led to several other projects. Um, so over the last 17 years, we've been working and traveling together and uh, really feels like family and friends. It's always good to come back here. So do you think this design ultimately is too extreme? Or why is not something built like this before? It, it looks like an extreme design uh, because the aesthetics are very different. But I think when you look at what elements we've incorporated here, a lot of it makes sense for owners that are in this case, very experienced owners, like to spend a lot of time on board, guests coming, guests going, some guests staying over for perhaps a few weeks, um, or entertaining. Uh, so in a way, the, it's a radical design that actually is, it, it makes sense, I think. <laughs> no, I fully agree, and I think there are some features on the boat that, because of rejuggling everything, are so standing out, like, like the, the observation lounge in the bow, but also, of the, in the front house, but also all the guest cabins together in the aft. So you know, I, th I think it's, a, it's an amazing design that should be built. And also we have, you take the tenders out, and of course you have this massive deck where you can play basketball, <laughs> golf if you like. So there's a whole activity deck here when the tenders are out. So how did you end up with this exterior design? So the entire concept here is we took all the elements of a super yacht, threw them up in the air and let them land where perhaps where, where they should be. So the proportions are very different. The two houses provide a unique uh, styling exercise, if you like, because no boat looks like this. Um, we wanted to make sure that it has a very dynamic look, uh, to look fast, to look purposeful. Um, we also need to make sure that the two houses have a continuation of the, of the aesthetics, if you like. But the front house needs to signal that that's the, f the front of the, of the boat. That's where the bridge is. So all these lines are, if you look at the lines here, they go together with, with, the, with the, the whole side window. And the same thing happens here. So it's almost two parts, with this being the prominent, more important part. And then the connection with the glass bridge, of course. This mast is, of course, separate from the heli helicopter. Uh, we want to make sure that any exhausts are brought out and doesn't pollute the aft decks. We also have put a crow's nest that goes up the mast here, so the guests can come up in the staircase, walk out to this two-seat pod that then travels up the mast, past the radars, and ends up all the way here for the most incredible views uh, of the surroundings. Uh, so it's an extra feature that makes this a really, the whole boat a destination, if you like. You know, but having the big tenders here, was a difficult engineering challenge. Well, there were quite a few <laughs> engineering challenges, but yeah, the tenders, of course, on the main deck. If you look at the two different houses that were created, of course, there's a, a glass thing in the air in the middle, and below there's a very big ocean lounge, um, where you normally your engine room would be. So there were a few things there uh, that we needed to take care of. So yeah, for strength uh, purposes, uh, we, we had a good look at, of course, there's a lot of if you see the band that is going from bow to stern, there's a lot of strength in that area. But also the engine room had to be single height, which is done before. Um, and luckily, with the use of diesel-electric propulsion nowadays, we have more flexibility. So the idea of this boat would be to have diesel-electric uh, generators and pods and propulsion, so also giving lower vibrations and being uh, more future-proof, so we can use uh, different um, uh, fuels in the future. Um, but yeah, the, the, the tenders on deck uh, require separate cranes um, and there's a lot of integration going on in the middle of the boat, whereas normally your house would be there. And also <clears throat> the, the single 
eight here engine room uh, meant that we could actually have the, the floor of the ocean lounge quite high above the water. So when the doors open, they would always be out of the, well out of the water. So almost in any condition, you could actually have that open. And in addition, we had sliding glass doors uh, on the side of it. So at night, you can leave the doors open close to the, the glass. Yeah, the ocean house, of course, including the swimming pool, uh, it's quite a, quite a place to be and with, with opening doors on either way and looking out to the, to the, to the surroundings uh, would be my destination to be on, uh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, thanks, Peter, for coming by today to talk about this uh, design. Uh, it was a nice conversation. Is there anything you would like to add at this point? No. <laughs> <laughs>